Okay, so I'm trying to make a video about why it's important that I know whether I'm having delusions or dissociation with reference to the whole imaginary split personality thing that I experience. Um, just, it's hard today. Um, gosh, you know, like I'm, I'm getting the thing where it feels like my heart rate's going faster than it actually is. Um, few reasons for that. It's weird though that I haven't had that for a few months I think and it's only once it comes back that I realize I haven't had it for a while. Um, but yeah, no, a few reasons. I haven't been sleeping well lately and this morning I had a bit of a nap and often uh, when I have like a day nap I'll wake up and my body will just be all out of whack. Um, that hasn't happened for, for a while, like lately. I've had a few naps and I haven't had that feeling until today. But another thing could be anxiety, because um, I'm going to see the dissociation specialist tomorrow when I'm filming this anyway. By the time you see this, I'll have already been and gone, so there's no point leaving me comments of reassurance or advice because it's too late. Um, but yeah, anxiety about that. Um, also, I mentioned in a previous video, I, I messed up my hormones a little bit, forgot to take the pill yesterday, took two today to catch up. Um, yeah, so hormones out of whack. Um, and then what was the other thing? There was another thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, the whole imaginary sense, uh, imaginary split personality thing, like whether that other part of me has been a bit more active and sometimes that messes up how I experience the world as well. So maybe that's a thing. I don't know. I'm just, I'm a bit muddled today and yeah. And also I've been trying to make videos this same video as well. I've been trying to make it and I keep derealizing a little bit, like watching myself make the video. Um, and that's a bit distracting. And then also I had some window that was doing weird updatey things and that was distracting. So anyway, with that <laughs> distracting stuff, hopefully out of the way. Um, yeah. So what's the issue? The issue is imaginary split personality. Okay. And I use that, that terminology, specifically, even though I know it's like not technically correct. Um, I, I realize, you know, dissociative identity disorder is a thing. Um, uh, I just, because I don't know if that's like, if my issue is on that sort of a spectrum, um, I just, imaginary split personality makes more sense to me because it's sort of like, you know, like how kids have imaginary friends. I kind of think of it that way. And like, I just, even though I'm really old now, I haven't grown out of it for some reason. Um, but yeah, no, so the two, okay, so yeah, it could be dissociation, but um, how I've been treating it since it came back, gosh, should I give background? Um, yeah, no, like, I've, I don't even remember when I started having this sort of, these sort of experiences, but be a bit before, I think a bit before my last big depression in 2015, it just sort of disappeared. And I thought, wow, I've finally grown out of that. Um, and then I got really badly depressed. Uh, and then after that depression, a little bit after, maybe six months or so, maybe longer, it just suddenly came back. And that's when I had to admit to myself that I am experiencing something. Like I thought, especially when it disappeared, I, and looking back, I thought, oh, well, that was just one of those late teens, early 20s, trying to find yourself kind of thing. Like, you know, the kids all go through that. Surely that's something I went through. Um, but when it came back, I had to admit to myself, actually, that's something I'm experiencing. There are some physical things that go along with it, not just like, you know, the changes in thought and perception and so on. There's like the way that I feel is also different. The, it's a lot harder to deny the physical stuff. Um, so yeah, I had to admit to myself that I actually go through something like that. Um, but you know, in the past when I was younger and like, you know, my, some of the people who've been watching me since the beginning, um, will remember, you know, I did used to humor it. Um, <laughs> I used to make sort of, it used to appear on the occasional video. Oh, those would all be deleted by now, but like, it's had a huge impact on my life. I mean, look at my wardrobe, look at all this black, right? Like that, is from that part of me. It, it's got a lot of dark interests. Um, the fact that I screamed, did the heavy metal screaming and learned all that, that's from that kind of thing. Like I was more of a, uh, you know, math, science, quiet nerd kind of kid, but um, that part of me is more into the darker things. And 
a bit more impulsive, I guess, and, um, yeah, just pieces of me that, I guess, were unacceptable, and I don't know. Um, so, <laughs> it had a huge influence on my life. It actually used to help me get through depression, so it's not, like, all bad. Like, yes, I describe it as dark, but it's not all bad because it did help me get through depression. Uh, when I didn't want to live, it still wanted to, and so that's part of the reason I humoured it, because I thought if if I'm not interested in life but this other part of me is might as well just go along with it and see what happens. So yeah, I did use to humor it, but since it disappeared, <laughs> I don't I don't know if this is the right way to describe it, but it kind of does feel like it abandoned me and then I had to go through that depression alone, but interestingly, I could finally focus on different things instead of always having that obsession going. I could finally explore different things in my art when I did the art degree. I did that sort of like as a my own version of art therapy um yeah, it's interesting how I was finally able to think different things, and my brain really rejigged during that depression. There's things that I can feel now that I never used to be able to feel you know emotionally, mainly to do with sadness about things but <laughs> oh dear anyway um. Yeah, no, since it came back, uh, instead of humouring it, um, you know, after talking to some friends and also a friend who ha is studying psychology, I sort of decided to treat it more like it's a delusion. Um, you know, I have schizoid personality disorder. I didn't know this at the time, but especially this year trying to figure out what to do. Um, I have schizoid personality disorder, which is thought to be on the schizophrenia spectrum. Like some people start off with, I'm too old for this, but some people start off with um, schizoid and it turns out to be pre-morbid to schizophrenia, so they develop schizophrenia later. Um, that tends to happen, I think, uh, in early adulthood, as I understand, so I'm a little bit too old for that. Um, but, you know, the fact that it's still on the spectrum could be a thing. Um, you know, uh, and so like schizoid personality disorder it has most similarities with the negative symptoms of schizophrenia, so if you don't know what that is, basically it's things that are taken away from a normal experience. So, like, anhedonia, take away the joy <laughs> that you can experience, stuff like that, whereas the positive symptoms of schizophrenia are the things that are added to your experience, which is, like, hallucinations, psychosis, um, you know, all that, all the more dramatic stuff that we usually think about when you think schizophrenia. Um, yeah, so as a schizoid, I experience more of the negative symptoms, but if it's on that spectrum, why not? Why isn't it possible? Like, sh it could be possible that I'm slightly further along on that spectrum and maybe I have some mild positive symptoms, so like delusions or a mild, maybe not hallucination, although I guess the hallucination can take a few forms, not just like seeing things, because I do feel some odd things, so some kind of perceptual disturbance, maybe, when it flares up. Um, it's possible, and the thing is, if it's a delusion, then what you do is you try to ignore it, you don't give it any credibility, you, you don't humour it, you don't encourage it, um, because that'll make it worse. You, you don't go along with the delusion. You, you just try and be like, okay, yep, sure, it's a thing I'm experiencing, just get through it, but it's not real. And that's that's been my approach since it came back, because, you know, yeah, I guess it helped when I did humour it, but there were things that did get a little bit dangerous, I guess, and things didn't work out either, so, um, you know, now that I'm older and hopefully more mature, it was just like, I think the more sensible thing to do is to just deny it, um, push it aside, try not to pay any attention. I'm not always successful, <laughs> but, um, because I guess it depends on how strong it is. Sometimes I just, and what's interesting is when it hasn't flared up, I don't, I think it's bullshit, but when it does flare up, it's so convincing and it feels real, but that's what a delusion is like, right? Like, you you believe it while it's happening. Um, I just happen to come back to not believing it and realising that it's not real. And, yeah, so that's, that's how I've been doing things for the past few years. Um, the trouble is it's still happening. It's not going away. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons I finally told my doctor and then um, told that psychologist, that hypnosis lady I saw late last year, but she was terrible. Um, God, useless. But the psychologist this year, I told her as well. Um, but yeah, so I finally told them, but they're telling me it could be dissociation instead. They're saying it sounds like dissociation. And I'm like, ooh, okay. Um, 
And so, because <laughs> if it's dissociation, it completely changes how I'm supposed to deal with it. If it's something more on that schizophrenia spectrum, then I should just be ignoring it and doing what I'm doing now. But if it's dissociation, that changes the game. And so what my psychologist has got me to do, she's, she's trying to tell me, like, try not to judge it. Just, you know, notice what you're experiencing, hopefully without judgment. And then also um, trying to tell me that it has a right to be expressed. Um, but also that it's like a child or a teenager, so it needs boundaries, so expressed within limits, um, <laughs> which is a very different way of thinking about it. I, I sort of, if it's dissociation, I'm meant to give it more credibility and also like figure out what its purpose is, like why did my brain split off a piece of me? And maybe that comes back to the idea of it being unacceptable, and I did grow up in a conservative Catholic environment, um, I don't know if glass child trauma that I went through is enough to have done that or if it's more other factors, um, but you know, that's assuming it's dissociation at all. And things that make me doubt that is like my psychologist asked me in one session, like, you know, we're going through what the window of tolerance thing is and I'm looking at this worksheet going, I don't really experience these things. Um, and she was also saying, let me know if you're feeling spacey at any point when we're talking about this stuff. And so I was starting to feel a bit like, whoa. And I told her and she's like, okay, we'll do a grounding exercise. You know, try and find five green things, name five green things in the room. Um, it just didn't help. Like that sort of, I, I, I guess I can understand that if someone is going out of reality, that maybe finding things in reality can help them be grounded. But that didn't. Because, like, it's not like I don't lose my memory, I don't lose my awareness. Uh, it's just a different state of mind, I guess. I'm still, and, you know, I, I'm often still having an experience of being in the background if it gets, like, you know, it, it doesn't often get to that level um, where, it, I guess, it takes over. Um, but when it has in the past, especially before that depression, um, when it was stronger, when I was humouring it, um, yeah, I, I had more of that experience of watching myself do things. Um, thankfully hasn't happened as much these days, but I haven't really let it get that far, have I? Um, but yeah, so she had me do these exercises and they just didn't help. Like, what helps bring me more back to myself is when I'm writing notes for her or, um, you know, writing notes to my psychologist about what I'm going through or maybe trying to fix a problem or, like, just focusing on something else. That's what helps, not spotting things in the room, sort of a more intense concentration that I have to do on something else that, you know, away from noticing whatever is happening, you know, with my experiences. Um, which is tough because, like, as part of the whole schizoid thing, um, she's been wanting me to try and notice more of, like, when I'm experiencing emotions and where in my body I'm experiencing it. But the main thing that I notice in my body is this other this imaginary split personality, whether that's a delusion or a dissociation thing, that's the main thing that I notice in my body. I can I can easily pinpoint the things that are going on there, but when I'm having an emotion, that's, that's trickier. Um, quite often by the time I remember that I'm supposed to be noticing these things, the emotions passed and I, I can't figure out where in my body I was feeling it. Because, um, yeah, it's easier to find these things while they're happening. Um, but, yeah, so that's the thing. The... Um, you know, that the grounding didn't work and that she had the window of tolerance thing sh worksheet she was showing me didn't sound right. And then also I have done research or tried to do research on dissociation and some of the things that are written down like in more scientific sources like uh, diagnostic manuals but also um, first-hand experiences from people who at least say they have dissociation. <laughs> Hopefully they do so that they're not leading me astray. But um, the things that they say they experience as well there are a lot of things that I just don't, that just don't sound like what I'm going through or sound a lot more severe or um, are just different. And so that makes me wonder, like, it, I suppose it's possible that I have a different way of experiencing dissociation, but equally I could be experiencing something completely different that just gives the illusion of looking like dissociation. And so that's stuff that I've been wondering about. Um, and yeah, as I said, I need to know which one it is because that completely changes how I'm supposed to treat it. So, you know, if it's a delusion, then I keep doing what I'm doing and um, tell myself it's not real, ignore it as best I can, 
Um, try not to humor it. Try not to encourage it. Sometimes I don't, I'm not successful, as you can see behind me. Um, sort of split personality fiction, and sometimes I just can't help myself. Like when it flares up, it's like it just makes me watch that stuff. So I'm not always successful in not humoring it. I mean, I'm watching Dexter at the moment as well. <sighs> anyway, you know, I need to just try not to humor it, is the point, if it's a delusion. But if it's dissociation, then I have to, like, get to know it again and. Oh dear, and there's a whole bunch of different work to do there, and maybe I need to go on the waiting list for this specialist to see her later next year and actually work through some of this stuff. And and then, like, you know, does that change things about my life? If it's more the delusion stuff, I just keep going through life as I am, but if it's dissociation, like, yeah, what does that mean for my life? And what do I tell people as well? Do I just keep keeping it to myself? Because it's taken me so long to open up to that whole medical field because I didn't want to be diagnosed with something I don't have. But I guess at this point in my life, I've screwed up my life so much that it doesn't matter anymore. Um, and I, I am tired of struggling so much in life and getting depressed all the time and not really knowing what to do with myself. And you know, having feelings that I don't want to be here, which I've had a bit more um, today as well. Um, being tired really doesn't help, though. Yeah, so I need a f I need to do it, and I need to just go in there and tell her and be open about, you know, tell the specialist what I'm going through and try not to beat around the bush. And so I've got to sit down and actually write some notes and just, yeah, get through it, figure it out. Oh, um, I just, I need, I need to have a break for a moment just while I like get my thoughts together because I'm getting a little bit. I was going to say more but got interrupted by mum coming home just as I started the camera again, threw me completely off. I think I was going to talk about depersonalization, derealization. How do we even know what reality is? How do we know this isn't a simulation? Why do we assume we're a brain in a box when brains might not actually exist in whatever a true reality might be like, e.g., we could be an AI having a hallucination? How weird today has been with fluctuations in energy between me dancing to baby metal vs fixing Mikey's computer, and also some stuff about glass child trauma and other factors that might have lead to my brain finding a need to compartmentalize the pieces of myself, etc etc and now that I write it down I realize it's maybe a good thing I didn't finish the video because that would have gone on forever lol. Anyway, thanks to my Patreon cult members, especially the sect on screen Solar Scribe Chronicler. I'll probably livestream on Monday 4pm Sydney time AEDT again and maybe then we'll talk more about how things went with the specialist and whether or not any of this is real lol. Catch you later. Kittens.私が私がカメラを再び起動した なぜ私たちは箱の中の脳だと思い込むのでしょうか。本当の現実がどのようなものであれ。例えば、私たちは幻覚を持つ私の脳が自分自身の断片を区分する必要性を発見することにつながった可能性のあるその他の要因などなど。わら、とにかく、パトレオンカルトメンバー、特にザセクトオンスクリーンのソーラースクライブクロニクラーに感謝します。シドニー
その後スペシャリストとの関係やこれが本当かどうかについて詳しく話します。わら。あとキャッチャー、子猫たち。